Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a book recommendations video. Um, I'm going to be reading the books like 1 to 5, but mo they're not going to be in the one like, side of the scale because these are books I personally like and none of them are books I don't like. And there are a few things I don't like about like each book usually, but these are my favorites. So there's not going to be really probably any under 4. But I just wanted to give you guys the ratings so that you knew which book you should read first and stuff like that. But that's probably all I have to say, so let's just get to the video. So the first book I have is Paper Towns by John Green. Um, I really did like this book. I didn't really like the ending. Um, I thought it was pretty anticlimactic, which was kind of better because it wasn't like a very predictable book. I wouldn't give it five stars. I would give it four just because... <sighs> I didn't really like the ending. It was kind of sad. That's like all I'm going to say about that. But I will read the back of it. Who is the real Margot? Quentin Jacobson has spent a lifetime loving the magnificently adventurous Margot Ross Spiegelman from afar. So when she cracks open a window and climbs into his life, dressed like a ninja and summoning him from an indigenous campaign of revenge, he follows. After their all-nighter ends and a new day breaks, Q arrives at school to discover that Margot, always an enigma, has now become a mystery. But Q soon learns that there are clues, and they're for him. Urged down a disconnected path, the closer he gets, the less Q sees the girl he thought he knew. Then my no next book I really like is This Is Where It Ends. Um, I'd probably give this book a five star. Um, the writing was really good, and I liked how it switched from character to character. Like Each chapter was a different character than the last. I think there were about like five characters. Um, it was really good. It is about like a school shooting, so it is a pretty deep book. But it is really good, and the writing is good. And each character, you can tell who it is by the way they portrayed the character and the way that they talked, and it was really amazing. And I'll read the description of it. It is, uh, the description does have time, so if you start seeing something weird, it's kind of weird. Okay, so 10 a.m. The principal of Opportunity High School finishes her speech, welcoming the entire student body to a new semester, and encouraging them to excel and achieve. 10.02 a.m. The students get up to leave the auditorium for the next class. 10.03 a.m. Auditorium doors won't open. 10.05 a.m. Someone starts shooting. Told from four different perspectives over the span of 54 harrowing minutes, terror reigns as one student's calculated revenge turns into the ultimate game of survival. So like it said in the description, it does happen over 45 minutes, which is kind of crazy because a lot happens, and it is a really good book. So Then the next book I have is Girl in Pieces. Um, I really did like this book. I'd probably give it four and a half just because there are some parts that I was a little like uncomfortable by, but I still read them, and the writing was really good, and it was a very depressing book. So if you're ever in like a sad mood, it might be a good book to read. Um, and I'll read the description. Charlotte Davis is in pieces. At 17, she's already lost more than most people do in a lifetime. But she's learned how to forget. The broken glass washes away the sorrow until there is nothing but calm. You don't have to think about your father and the river, your best friend who's gone forever, or your mother who has nothing left to give you. Every new scar hardens Charlie's heart just a little more, yet it still hurts so much. It hurts enough to not care anymore, which is sometimes what has to happen before you can find your way back from the edge. A deeply moving portrait of a girl in a world that owes her nothing and has taken so much in the journey she undergoes to put herself back together. So it is, It could. this book could also be a little triggering because she does cut herself sometimes and she talks about it. So if it would be triggering for you, you probably shouldn't read it. It is a very deep book, but it is very good and written very well. And then the next book I have is Everything Everything. Um, I really liked this book, and at the end, it was a big twist, and it wasn't expected at all. Like, I didn't expect it at all. I'd probably give it four and a half stars, too, just because it was a little, like, teeny and, like, not as adulty as sometimes I like to read. And so it was it was good, though. I didn't go see the movie, so I have no clue if the movie is like the book at all. So I'm not going to recommend the movie, but the book was really good. I liked the characters in it, and yeah. Live life in a bubble or risk everything for love. My disease is as rare as it is famous. Basically, I'm allergic to the world. I don't leave my house. I have not left my house in 17 years. The only people I ever see are my mom and my nurse, Clara. 
But then one day, a moving truck arrives next door. I look out my window and I see him. He's tall, lean, and wearing all black. Black t-shirt, black jeans, black sneakers, and a black knit cap that covers his hair completely. He catches me looking and stares at me. I stare right back. His name is Ali. Maybe we can't predict the future, but we can predict some things. For example, I, Maddie, am certainly going to fall in love with Ali. It's almost certainly going to be a disaster. And it is really good. Um, the next book is All the, All the Bright Places. I haven't read this book in a really long time. I think I read it like a year or two ago. So there are parts that I don't quite remember. But from when, what I can remember, I really like this book. So I'd probably give it a four and a half. Just because I don't remember if I liked it um, enough to give it a five. But it is written really well from what I can see. I think there is a little bit of triggering parts in the beginning. Because I think they... They're sitting on the top of a building, I remember that, and I can't quite remember why they both were there, but I think I know. So I think the beginning could be a little triggering to some people, but this book is really good, so I'll read the back. Okay, so there's like two descriptions. There's like one in the back, and it's kind of them talking back and forth, and then there's a description, so I'll read both. I was just sitting there, on the railing. I didn't come up to here to, you know, jump. Let me ask you something. Do you think there's such a thing as a perfect day. What? A perfect day, start to finish, when nothing terrible or sad or ordinary happens. Do you think it's possible? I don't know. Have you ever had one? No. I've never had one either, but I'm looking for it. Thank you, Theodore Fitch, for saving me. If you ever tell anyone about this, I'll kill And then here's the description. Theodore Finch is fascinated by death. Every day he thinks of ways he might die. But every day he also searches for and manages to find something to keep him here, and alive, and awake. Violet Markey lives for the future counting the days until graduation, when she ex can escape her small Indiana town and her aching grief in the wake of her sister's death. When Finch and Violet meet on the ledge of the bell tower at school, six stories above the ground, it's unclear who saves whom, and when the unlikely pair teams up on a class project to discover the natural wonders of their state, they go, as Finch says, where the road takes them, the grand, the small, the bizarre, the beautiful, the ugly, the surprising, just like life. Soon it's only... With Violet, the French can be himself, a bold, funny, live-out-loud guy who's not such a freak after all. And it's only with Fitch that Violet forgets to count away the days and starts living them. But as Violet's world grows, Finch's begins to shrink. And then the next book is Every Last Word. Um, this is a really good book, and I think I'd give it a five. <laughs> it's really good. Um, it's written really well, and the main character, like, so basically she has OCD, but she has really bad OCD, and it's kind of crazy to think that she has such bad OCD. I read this, like, a year ago, but I still remember everything because it's such a great book, and, um, the writing is beautiful, and the word, like, the words they choose are really good, and I love this book so much, and so I'll read it to you. If you could read my mind, you wouldn't be smiling. Samantha McAllister looks just like the rest of the popular girls in her junior class, but hidden beneath the strained hair and expertly applied makeup is a secret that her friends would never understand. Sam has purely obsessional OCD and is consumed by a stream of dark thoughts and worries that she can't turn off. Second-guessing every move, thought, and word makes daily life a struggle, and it doesn't help that her lifelong friends will turn toxic at the first sign of a wrong outfit, wrong lunch, or wrong crush. Yet, Sam knows she'd be truly crazy to leave the protection of the most popular girls in school. So when Sam meets Caroline, she has to keep her new friend with a refreshing sense of humor and no style a secret. Right up there with Sam's weekly visits to her psychiatrist. Caroline introduces Sam to Poet's Corner, a hidden room in a tight-knit group of misfits who have been ignored by the school at large. Sam is drawn to them immediately, especially a guitar-playing guy with a talent for verse, and starts to discover a whole new side of herself. Slowly, she begins to feel more normal than she ever has as a part of the popular crowd, until she finds a new reason to question her sanity and all she holds dear. So that's a really good book, and I definitely would recommend that. And then I have the Fifth Wave series. Um, I really liked this series. It was really good. Um, I know many people have read it. I just thought it was written very well, and I do like dystopian-type books. And this is, like, written, like, it's a teen book, but it's, like, kind of adulty too. Um, there's not much I have to say about it. Also, I don't see, like, a description at all. 
Okay, so my camera died, and I was talking about the fifth wave, and I was talking about how they didn't have a description, but I went on my phone and I looked up a description because I didn't want to just, like, leave you guys and be like, read this book, but you have no clue what it's about, so let me read that. Now it's the dawn of the fifth wave, and on a lonely stretch of highway, Cassie runs from them. The beings who only look human, who roam the countryside killing anyone they see, who have scattered Earth's last survivors. To stay alone is to stay alive. Cassie believes until she meets Evan Walker, beguiling and mysterious. Evan Walker may be Cassie's only hope for rescuing her brother, or even saving herself. But Cassie must choose between trust and despair, between defiance and surrender, between life and death. To give up, or to get up. Um, so that's like the description of the book. It is like about like aliens, so to speak, but like it's not like, ooh, aliens, big green guys, whatever. It's kind of crazy and it's a really good dystopian book so if you like dystopian you should definitely read it and I don't know if I said this before but I definitely would give it a five it's one of my favorites so I have some other books too but one of them I don't own and the other one I own but I have no clue where it is I went to look for it and I couldn't so it's the girl on the train um I love the book so much I definitely give it a five for it's suspenseful there's clip like not cliffhangers there's like twists and I love the writing. The writing is like so good. Like the style, the words she uses. It's like one of my favorite books and it's definitely worth a read. Um, I love the characters and there's, like I said before, there's lots of twists and there's lots of characters and crazy things happen. So yeah, I'll read the description. There she sits, the girl on the train. What she sees, gazing at the window, will change everything. Every day the same. Rachel takes the same commuter train every morning and night. Every day, she rattles down the track, flashes past a stretch of cozy suburban homes, and stops at the signal that allows her to daily watch the same couple breakfasting on their deck. She looks forward to it. She's even started to feel like she knows them. Jess and Jason, she calls them. Their life, as she sees it, is perfect. Not unlike the life she recently lost. Until today. And then she sees something shocking. It's only a minute until the train moves on, but it's enough. Now everything's changed. Unable to keep it to herself, Rachel goes to the police. But is she really as unreliable as they say? Soon she is deeply entangled, not only in the investigation, but in the lives of everyone involved. Has she done more than, more harm than good? So, like I said before, she basically sees this couple every day, and she watches them, because she just takes a train, and she's just looking out the window. And then she notices something different one day, and she tells the police, and they all think she's crazy, and everyone thinks she's crazy, and it's just a really good book, and, and I really recommend reading it. It's a really good read. Like I said before, it's probably my favorite book of all time. Um, this book I don't own currently. Um, it's a series. I read it from the library. Um, it's probably my favorite series, like a dystopian. It's probably my favorite dystopian series. It's really good written, and it's... Un the unwind series um i read it i started reading it in eighth grade like the beginning of eighth grade and i probably finished at end of eighth grade it's a really good book and there are twists it is kind of more teenagery than adulty but it is a really good dystopian book it's kind of crazy to think about if it actually happened so i'll read the description and then you guys will see what i'm talking about the second civil war was fought over reproductive rights the chilling resolution life is invulnerable from the moment of conception until age 13. Between the ages of 13 and 18, however, parents can have their child unwound, whereby all of the children's organs are transplanted into different donors. So life doesn't technically end. Connor is too difficult for his parents to control. Riza, a ward of the state, is not talented enough to be kept alive. And Lev is eyes, a child conceived and raised to be unwound. Together, they may have a chance to escape and to survive. So basically there's a civil war fought and um, abortions are no longer allowed but from age 13 to 18 um, a parent can choose to unwind their child which is basically like technically it's not ending their life because it, they're never killed but their organs are taken every piece of them is taken and given to another child so that they can survive and there are three main characters and they are trying to escape because they're about to be unwound and basically weird things are happening and they start noticing strange strange things but it's a really good book i am not quite sure how many books are in the series but i think it's quite a few um i'd probably give it a five i'd probably give it five stars but that's probably gonna be it for this video um i hope you guys like my book suggestions and if you think you have any book suggestions for me you can totally comment them down below you could also comment down below any video ideas you have and you could like this video if you liked it or you found any of the suggestions helpful 
Sorry my last video was really blurry. I think this one will be better because um, I'm using a different camera that has a viewfinder so that I can make sure that it's clear. If you guys think you're in like my channel, you can totally subscribe. And that's going to be it for today. So, bye!